us talk about the second type of inhibition. The first one was called competitive because there was a competition between the inhibitor and substrate. The second one is known as non-competitive inhibition. And as the name suggests, there is no competition. We can understand it by drawing the diagram. If this is how we draw our enzyme molecule and these slots represent the active sites and this becomes our substrate molecule. So substrate can fit into this active site. The inhibitor does not compete with the substrate. Its structure is totally different from this. That means if we go by this lock and key mechanism, this inhibitor cannot fit into this active site. So substrate can bind to the active site, but inhibitor cannot bind to the active site because it cannot fit in. Or in other words, the inhibitor is not going to compete with the substrate to bind with the active site. Then where is this inhibitor going to go and bind? The inhibitor binds at a site other than active site. It binds anywhere. So let us draw this enzyme here and say the inhibitor goes and binds here. This is the inhibitor. This place is not the active site. So there is no competition. But as soon as the inhibitor binds with the enzyme, the enzyme undergoes conformational change. Its shape changes. And when we are talking about the shape change, even the active sites have changed and the substrate is as it is. The substrate is still there. But because the active site has changed, can the substrate molecule bind with it? The answer is no. So not even one substrate molecule is able to bind with this changed enzyme molecule. And how many products would be formed? There is no product formation. That means in one step itself, the product formation is completely stopped. What happened in case of competitor? 50% inhibitor was binding with the enzyme and 50% substrate was binding. And product formation was reduced, but it was 50%. In this case, the inhibitor is not competing with the substrate to bind with the active site. It goes and binds to the enzyme at some other site, but because of which the enzyme undergoes conformational change, its active sites change. So not even one substrate is able to bind and product formation is totally zero. Example of this type of inhibition is cyanide. Cyanide binds, it is a non-competitive inhibitor, it binds to Cytochrome oxidase. Cytochrome oxidase. Cytochrome oxidase is the enzyme which is important in cellular respiration. It plays important role in cellular respiration. And if the cellular respiration stops, then the cell's activity is also going to stop and that is why cyanide results into instant death. One more example that we can take is of an antibiotic that is penicillin. Penicillin is a non-competitive inhibitor of enzyme required for cell wall formation in bacteria. So if bacteria is growing, it has to reproduce and cell wall formation would take place. There would be an enzyme which is going to help in the cell wall formation. But penicillin is going to act as a non-competitive inhibitor. That means it is going to bind to the enzyme at a site other than active site. But the product formation would totally stop. And this is why penicillin is used to treat bacterial infection. So these are two important examples of non-competitive inhibition. The third type of inhibition that we talk of is known as 
allosteric inhibition allosteric inhibition allosteric inhibition is also known as feedback mechanism it is also called feedback mechanism feedback mechanism in this mechanism the product regulates its own formation let us take a simple reaction glucose and atp they would bind or atp would give the phosphate and we would get glucose 6 phosphate plus adp the enzyme which helps in this reaction is hexokinase and in this one step this is uh, the first step of glycolysis so in this one step reaction glucose 6 phosphate is the product and the product is going to regulate its own formation for our understanding say we require or the cell requires 100 molecules of glucose 6 phosphate for any reason if this number decreases say this number from 100 goes to 99 then this low concentration of the product is going to stimulate the enzyme to increase its activity and when enzyme activity is going to increase it will result in conversion of more glucose into glucose 6 phosphate and the number from 99 will come back to 100. Second situation, if the number increases, say it becomes 110, concentration is high of the product, then the product, high concentration of the product, again stimulates the same enzyme to lower its activity so that less glucose gets converted into glucose 6-phosphate. And slowly this 110 is going to come to the normal concentration that is 100 molecules. So what exactly is happening here? The product is regulating its own concentration or its own formation by stimulating or affecting the enzyme. If it increases the enzymatic activity, we call it positive feedback. If it lowers the enzymatic activity, we call it negative feedback. And that is why we are calling it feedback mechanism. Most of the enzymes in our body, they work by this mechanism. We need to add one more thing in case of non-competitive inhibitor. When we were talking about competitive, we said it is reversible when substrate concentration is increased. But non-competitive is irreversible. It is a an irreversible mechanism no matter how much concentration of substrate you increase product formation is not going to take place because of this inhibitor which has changed the conformation of the enzyme and this enzyme is not capable of binding with the substrate so increasing in sub increase in substrate concentration does not affect this type of inhibition and that is why we call it irreversible whereas the competitive one was a reversible so there are three ways in which the enzyme inhibition can take place competitive non-competitive and allosteric or feedback